will be very brief. I just want to tell you some technical questions, uh, some technical things uh, before I uh, invite you to ask questions because that's why we are here, for you to ask questions to our special guest this year, Michel uh, I just want to go through the next moments when you can meet him because uh, He's here and he will be here today, uh, several other moments. Uh, after yesterday when he opened uh, in presence of press and guests the home movie factory at Craig. Uh, now today we have a master class at 12.30 at Tiff Lounge, moderated by Heike Lowe. So you we were really invited to continue after here, there. Um, at 3 o'clock, there's a screen of Be Kind Rewind at Cinema Victoria, which will be followed by Q&A and Sherman Lee present again. We are really taking a lot of your time, but thank you for giving it to us. And uh, the last moment when you can really uh, just, uh, meet uh, Mr. Gondry is at the screen of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Cinema Ferrin Kersik starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. But Michel Gondry will be here with his films during the entire duration of the festival. And at the end of the festival, to, to put the other camontes, uh, there will be um, one of his favorite collaborators, the composer and pianist, uh, Jean Michel Bernard, who will uh, give a masterclass on Friday the 7th at, uh, 7, at uh, 7.30 at 5.30 p.m. in this lounge. And on the 8th, just before the closing ceremony of uh, TIF, at 6.30 at Casa de Cultura Students, there will be a concert of his music, his music played by him, composed also by him and other composers. So, Michel Gondry, full respect, retrospective at uh, TIF 2019, with uh, the films, the concert, and of course, and of course, uh, the home movie factory which he introduced yesterday and which will be open until the 31st of July. Uh, every day, you know probably all of you that uh, it, it, uh, it is open and free to all people living in Cluj in the region and why not traveling from longer distances to, to live this experience. Uh, there are daily uh, groups which are formed on a website which is called Uzina. And on a Uzina the film and inscriptions are on Uzina um, um, raw. Um, I would like to ask you like to say something that is something or shall we invite the Can you sing? Um, I think it's better to or speak in English? Or? Yes, if we speak in English, we don't need to do a translation, I ask. If we spoke French, I would have had to translate into English and Romanian, or just English. So, yes, in fact, this is an option if you want to speak French and I translate in English. No, because it's easier for me to speak in English. But it's French, translation, it's harder. I don't want to underline your job. So, but I prefer to speak in this. It's more direct. So, um, shall we start with the questions? Anyone the courage to start? Here. Thank you. So, I'll speak in English or in French? In English. In English. Good morning. I'm Anna Bataran, I'm the one in Akutural. Uh, I'd like to start with the uh, Home uh, Movie Factory. How did you start this project and uh, what uh, makes you to continue to do it? Um, there is many... Well, the most... Uh, the easiest way to explain how I started is to start with this movie, Peter Rewind, in which the actor, the character, and run uh, sort of a VHS uh, video uh, router, a video club, and they erase the film uh, by mistake, and to cover the situation, they recreate each time, each time somebody 
come to make the film, they uh, have to shoot it so they can deliver uh, the film. Uh, so it started like that. Um, it was, of course, a movie and the uh, utopia, but while I shot the film, we shot sequences um, in the same fashion with kids and people who lived in the uh, area. And when I saw their expression, uh, when they discover what they had done, uh, and I saw, and it's a scene at the end of the film, when they discover the film they shot, I uh, specifically asked uh, the crew to not show the film to them before we shoot them. And so we have a real expression from them. Um, they were really, it was a mix of uh, laughter, emotion, and pride. And I thought I ought, I ought to try it for real. And it's how I started the film factory. So it, it, it went through different stages. First, um, I asked people to come every week uh, for one hour to write the story. And people didn't come back, mostly. So I decided that every, all the process should be contained into a small amount of time. And it should be something really uh, enticing for them to participate and it's why we have those sets. But it's really fun to watch and it motivates people to uh, participate. So it's, it's how it, it, it started basically. And I kept going because I want to share the experience with uh, how many people as possible. Um, I think, I don't know other experience or workshop or system uh, that have the same concept. And it's, it's great to travel from in many cities, meet people uh, that I don't know and they are passionate about their participation. Uh, so I, I keep weak. Uh, do we have another question? Yes? Bonjour. Uh, I want to know more about your relationship with dreams, how it all started, and if you had like your first memorable dream that made you use it in your art. I remember, I remember a dream that a recurrent sort of nightmare I had when I was five, six. Uh, it was every day, every other day for a few years. It was very painful, but I didn't use it in a, in a movie. Uh, I don't know. What to, because my two first movies were written by Charlie Kaufman, so they didn't have a room or necessity to incorporate a dream. Um, of course, when I did The Science of Sleep, I incorporated a lot of dreams, uh, dreams that were related to my experience with this woman, played by Charlie Gainsbourg. So, I use these dreams without trying to understand them. And I put them basically in the order I had them. And they were obviously uh, provoked by the situation. So they would fit in the story. Then I know for sure that in my club and gasoline, uh, I incorporate many uh, dreams and it was dreams I had while I started to write the first part of the film. first part was a collection of moments uh, of my past uh, of this relationship I, have, I had with my friend um, and 
So I believe that in digging into the, the past, the reality, uh, it created more abstract dreams. And I uh, decided to use these dreams for the second half of the movie because, again, they were connected to the subject, even though they didn't make sense sometimes. Uh, so that these two movies are really the one I use my dream for the most. Okay, how about Mr. Hello, my name is Anna Marco from Panama Radio. And um, in this regard, I want to know what were the most important experiences and influences that shaped your directing style and your approach to filmmaking in general? Well, I was not a, a film uh, shindo, a film fanatic. I like to go and watch uh, comedies, bridge, bridge films, for instance, in the seventies. Um, I like more uh, art, um, mechanics, invention, science, which makes me like the camera, because it was really a mix of both work. Um, so how so how I started the uh, oh yes 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 sorry okay so when I was maybe four or five uh, because my parents were both working uh, the day off was first day uh, in, in my school, so I had to stay there, I was maybe a third of the pupils, and uh, this day they uh, put a big tent in the uh, the school yard. Uh, and they screened uh, uh, a copy of uh, the Hot Balloon Journey. This story about uh, a granddad uh, who invented uh, a new hot balloon, uh, hot hair, hair balloon that can be really uh, it's very functional and practical to turn and, and, and travel. And his person uh, sneak into the basket and uh, he has to take him because it's too late. And so it's just a movie about uh, traveling over France from the north and you see the lines because it was still working at the time, it was in the 60s. Uh, to Brittany, to uh, the Alps, and uh, it's a very, very simple story, and uh, this became my favorite movie, and uh, it's still now, I'm watching the viewers over there, and uh, it's, it's just very pure. That's the director, Albert Morris, who did The Red Balloon, and I did The uh, Femme Blanc, about the horse, and he was a helicopter specialist and he invented a system to shoot uh, from the helicopter. So all of the shots are made uh, in a real space. There is no special effect except that the, the basket was hanging uh, below the helicopter and it was a camera attached. And that was his son actually that he put there. And there is many little details, like for instance, when you're underneath a helicopter, uh, it's very uh, noisy and windy. Uh, when you're in a hot balloon, a hot air balloon, it's very quiet because it follows the wind, so there is no wind. So it does all the sound, and it gives a very dreamy 
feeling. And this director died in the helicopter crash. Uh, speaking of which, I would like to bring us all into the balloon because I think we all feel like in a helicopter. Please close that door because it's so loud from outside. Oh, it's good. And now we're in the balloon. Okay. I was uh, promised a tea. I promised a tea and it's waiting for you there. Can you have the Okay. Meanwhile, do we have another question from someone else? I saw. Uh, oh, yes, I've been raised. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mirella from Rebecca Chemistry. Uh, I was curious about the process behind the factory, um, the film factory, uh, precisely about how you work uh, with the local team of industry specialists, and who are they? Who are the local uh, industry specialists that you work with? How the process for so realizing the, uh, the factory? Okay, you didn't say local. I heard local, no? Yeah. Because it's important for me to work with people from the city. And I uh, leave a lot of room uh, in creating the sets to local people. Uh, because I think it's nice, and also uh, it uh, it brings a different flavor or look to the set. Um, so the, the principal um, of the film factory uh, for me is. I'm, not, I'm confused because I'm not sure I remember the question now. So you want to know how it works, basically? Yeah, how you work with the local team in implementing the... Ah, no, so you said local, with the local uh, team. Well, it's a little bit tricky, and I think there is a collaboration with people uh, that follow the, the factory everywhere it goes, and people uh, here uh, in which uh, we have people uh, working with the projection, the video, uh, and, and there is some bridge that has to be made, so everybody works uh, well together. It's not always the easiest part, um, but we try as much as we can to, to work with, with, with the local people. But if they have new ideas outside of the concept, uh, if they have new ideas outside of your concept or something you didn't think of, do you accept it? Well, it depends in what department. Because a lot of time it's connecting the video screen to the to a computer, or, and there is not uh, uh, much creativity. And, and it's sometimes uh, people propose me to add a green screen or. And I'm a little bit um, uh, strongly opposed to that. I, I want to make sure everything uh, is made uh, in the spirit uh, of the factory, which is that when you when you when you've been through the process, you feel that it's your own film. You don't feel there have been. Uh, outside uh, help and, and, uh, that basically your participation was limited. The participation of the uh, uh, people who come uh, have to be the, the highest, uh, highest possible. So they really feel they made something. They have this satisfaction. Uh, Pride. So that's my uh, main focus. And sometimes uh, I ask, uh, but more to the people who frame the experience. There is one uh, one person uh, who are generally uh, film students who make sure the group uh, doesn't go completely off track. 
uh, and I always ask them to participate the less possible and to tell me when and why they have to intervene uh, so we can make the, the, the whole system uh, evolve. Uh, but as for the technical uh, aspect, uh, in fact, I'm not sure if, if I know exactly who does what. But I really focus on the, the, the aspect of how, how people will behave and how much we need to tell them so the experience works. So I guess uh, your question was related also very much to the local elements like the electric castle scene and the Banca Transylvania scene and uh, No, she was talking, it's what I thought first, but she was talking more about the technician, technical aspect. Okay, they were the suggestions of the local architect, of the local Yeah, the, the suggestions are more coming from the person who can be the set. So we have suggestions for set, but, but there are many sets that are uh, invented and proposed and, uh, and built by the people who live in the city. Um, and I think, I, mean, I think I said that before, but it's very important. So it makes the factory different each time. And it's great, I mean, I really enjoy when I walk in for the first time when I discover uh, ideas that have been brought in. Um, so it's very, this part is very open. The technical part, it's, it's, bit of, it's, uh, it's more constraining, uh, so it, it stays the same. Okay, uh, uh, hello, Silvia Migraki from Observatorio Cultural. Uh, I was wondering if uh, one of your movies, one of the movies produced within the, the movie factory, went beyond the, the workshop level and went on to, to become uh, a real movie. No, I don't think so. But there is one experience where this guy in uh, New Jersey has, when he was a kid, he wanted to be a sweep truck driver. And uh, I feel a bit guilty because he followed the, the factory. He came twice, actually, when it was in New York. And then he uh, decided to do a real film, a musical about him becoming a sweet truck driver uh, and he was in the big and he was the worst actor in the world.